Hello, welcome back. In case you're new, my name is Steve. I am building a racing game with Unity. This is my devlog series. Currently I'm number 25. And I'm basically doing test builds so I can gauge performance impact of the systems that I'm working on. And basically right now I am in the process of throwing all of the different graphic systems that I plan on using and gameplay systems into the project and testing them, stress testing. So in the last video, I had one piece of feedback about the, the ground textures, the road textures, um, that they were noisy. Yeah, those were just the default road materials that were used from Road Architect. And yeah, I, I just swapped them out because that was an eyesore. I just had never actually spent any time trying to improve it. Another thing I did was I, I increased the density of the vegetation since I've realized that that's not really a performance issue um, based on the system that I'm using. So yeah, more grass looks cool. Um, I went through and actually somebody had told me that it was another developer that I know from online encounters. Um, he had mentioned that Enviro was going to be a performance issue for me. And basically, yeah, I, I had to deal with that. I didn't want to ditch Enviro because like it looked awesome, but it was really causing a lot of performance issues. In the last video, I said it was basically the AI, but it wasn't the AI. It was definitely Enviro. Um, I was hoping it would be something that I can control a little bit easier, but I'm not a graphics programmer, so digging into that code is a little bit more challenging than um, what I like to deal with. So what I ended up doing was replacing Enviro with a standard skybox, which is what you see here. And after I had that standard skybox set up, it really it just has that moon in it and it's blue. So I could adjust the tint of it and it, it looks like a night sky. Right. On top of that, I used some screen space clouds and that system is really powerful. It comes with 50 preset profiles, but I, I played with one of them a little bit and adjusted it. There's probably about two or three, maybe three or four dozen different parameters on the clouds to control them and, and change the way they look. So that's really cool. I'll, I'll probably play with that more as I go. That way there's not just like one type of cloud. It'll probably spawn a random type of cloud every time you load into the level. But that's not something I really want to focus on right now. So the the main issue was fixing the performance impact from the sky system I currently had. And I feel like I've done that. So at, at this point, where, where I'm looking right now, I'm running high 60s, low 70s as far as frame rate is. In the last build, this was running in the low 50s sometimes high 40s. So it was really an issue. My goal is to, I, on this particular system that I'm testing on, it's going to have all of the high high fidelity graphics enabled. Eventually I'm going to create an options menu to toggle different graphic settings off. Uh, there's, I, I have a really cheap AA solution set up right now. I, I'd like to have a high-end anti-aliasing solution, but that is also a little performance heavy. So so for right now, it's just off. Once I get the options menu in, uh, I'll make it so that you could switch between different types of anti-aliasing technologies based on whatever your computer can handle. Um, so this PC is a an i7. 6800K, it's not overclocked, and I have a ton of RAM and a, a GeForce 1080. On my other test machine, I'm using a Celeron 2, 
and on on that machine I test on low settings, but all of these different graphics effects are always enabled. So the the low end machine with the Celeron and the 1060 and only four gigs of RAM, that one will probably have to default to a lot of these settings off, but currently it, it was running at 60 frames on low, so not much of an issue there either. At this point, I'm, I'm really happy with the results of switching the Sky system because I feel like it still looks pretty decent and um, I have a lot of options to customize it even farther if I want. The biggest thing that's not here anymore is this, the, the sky shafts or the moon shafts that would be being projected over the buildings and, and going through the trees as like a volume light. But I, I can probably find a way to get that in here using Aura. Um, I just have to play with it a little bit more. So that being said, yeah, I've basically just, oh yeah, so I did use Aura 2 from the asset store. So what I've used that for is distance haze. So like right now when I'm up close to this building, everything's really clear. But as as you're a little bit farther away, you can see some some volumetric haze. And that's coming from Aura. I don't have it attached to any lights in the scene. And you might notice the scene is a little darker. So once there's more street lights in the scene and just other light sources, I think it'll look better. I'm going to jump into this race. And this was something that, that actually really made me realize how heavy Enviro was. So right now, after I loaded into this race, we're, we're sitting at 120 frames per second. When I still had Enviro in, this race when it started from this viewpoint was running at 70 frames. So literally just by replacing Enviro, I was able to get, get 50 frames per second on this high-end machine, which is nuts. I, I didn't really realize it was costing me that much. And I also made a few other minor optimizations, but yeah, it's really a shame because that's a really sweet looking weather system. It just, it, I can't use it in this game because it it's just way too much of a performance hog. And I'd rather spend that performance on things that will actually matter to the player. Like I said, it, playing with it for a few hours, I was able to get a, a decent ambient setup and I'm happy with it. I think it could still be improved, but for right now, my plan is to move on. So moving forward, I think the next steps are to probably set up that options menu system. I have to figure out where my skid trails have gone because I don't, I don't see any skid trails anymore. So maybe one of the effects that I have on is, is not working well with the shader that I'm using for that skid trail. I don't know what happened to them though. So as I develop more of this project and add more content to it and other people that have developed large projects that just continue to grow, you've probably already realized that you just start getting more friction between different types of assets that you're creating or using, and you're going to have to figure out a way to deal with those. So like Aura, for example, that volumetric haze, I'm having, like I have to have all of my camera, all of my other cameras disabled. When another camera comes on, like it seems to mess it up, even if that camera is not used for the primary render. So yeah, it, it's just a lot of different issues. So I ended up turning off all of the dialogue for now. And as I get back to the point where I want to add dialogue. I'll probably not use a camera like I was using. I there's They're not going to be talking or anything. Like, you're not going to see their lips move. So I could probably just use a standard texture instead of a camera for that. And that was really the, the only issue I ran into with Aura was not being able to have 
a dialogue camera without custom coding something. But anyway, um, yeah, this is where I'm at, and I've been working on on setting up a better lighting system and just overall on performance, and I think I'm at a good point now. So I'm probably going to start either moving into world building, which I really want to do, or moving into creating the options menu, which is something that I'm going to have to do anyway, but that's not really fun. That's just something I have to do. So yeah, uh, thanks for checking it out. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.